Okay, in this video we're going to look at inverse Laplace transforms that are a little bit complicated than the ones we did in the last video. And to summarize with this uh, mess left over from the last video, uh, if you can take a, uh, uh, an expression and manipulate it into a form where the thing that you've got looks like something in a table, then you can just look at the time variable and get the uh, inverse Laplace transform. If you can do that, you should and be done with it. But what if you can't? Well, this brings us to the uh, concept of partial fraction expansions. Okay, wasn't that some slick uh, special effects there? So the idea behind a partial fraction expansion is that I might be able to um, take some ratio of polynomials and write it in terms of um, something that looks like this. I'm using the notation that MATLAB uses here. There are other notations that are often used. But the idea is I can break the uh, this uh, ratio of polynomials into terms that have a constant on top, this would be the constant on top, and our s minus p, or uh, depending on whether p is positive or negative, uh, the actual thing will be positive or negative. So I've got this value down here. And we know from looking at tables that this term will transform to r1 e to the s p1 whoops, 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 got a little carried away there, e to the p1t u of t. Okay, so the idea here is we're going to take a ratio of polynomials and turn it into pieces that we can individually take the inverse Laplace transform for, and uh, that will make, that'll make it fairly easy. Now, it turns out that quite often, we'll end up with terms that, here we'll get another color here, we'll end up with terms that look a lot like this, and that will lead us to time values, that look, or time components that look like this. There will be other patterns that will show up in a partial fraction expansion, and uh, uh, we'll talk about those as they show up. So, how do we compute partial fraction expansions? Well, um, my approach to computing partial fraction expansions anymore is to have a computer do it. Uh, when I took this uh, topic, oh, probably 25 years ago, I hate to admit that I'm that old, um, we did partial fraction expansions by hand. And I frankly learned to hate it uh, because I wasn't particularly good at uh, doing it without making errors. There's a lot of places where you can make errors and things can just get kind of messy. So I'm happy to do it with a computer. Depending on your situation, if your goal is to um, learn what's necessary to pass a class, I wouldn't be surprised if you're still doing them by hand. Uh, if your goal is to just do things quickly and efficiently, then maybe you've transcended that. Um, so what I will do is uh, go through this first one fairly slowly, and we'll use uh, Wolfram. Uh, uh, well, from alpha to do the partial, fra partial fraction expansion, I like the way it does it because it actually shows you um, what it's doing to compute the partial fraction expansion. So let's start here. Let's say that we have 10 over s squared plus 2s. So if your memory is good, you might recognize this from the previous video. But what we want to do is we want to break this up into a couple of terms. In this case, we'll have two terms. And then we'll take the inverse Laplace transform of each of the two terms. And the first way we'll do this is we'll go to um, Wolfram Alpha, get rid of our uh, Laplace transform table, and we'll just type partial fraction 10 divided by s squared plus s. 
Okay. So hopefully that text is not so small that you can't see it uh, because the text is going to come up as equally as small. So I tell it to compute that and there it is. Okay. So basically I told it that I wanted partial fraction of 10 over s squared plus s. It gives me a result of 10 over s minus 10 over s plus 1. We'll take that back to our drawing in just a minute. And um, then it gives me plots. It shows uh, this function uh, as a uh, uh, as a function of s, which may or may not be interesting. But if you go to the result and you click on the show steps, you get this long sequence of things, and it basically shows you every step it's gone through to compute the partial fraction expansion. And this is essentially what you would do if you were going to compute this partial fraction expansion by hand. At least this is one of the ways that it can be done. There are several other ways that can be done, which again I'm not going to go over because it just doesn't really um, um, seem like the best use of everybody's time to compute partial fraction expansions by hand. But again, that's uh, your mileage may vary. Um, so basically you can see that it uh, factors the denominator and then it writes out what the partial fraction expansion should look like with unknown constants theta 1 and theta 2 at the top. It uh, multiplies uh, out the equation and then it uh, collects terms with, this, with similar powers of s and that gives you a system of two linear equations and two unknowns and then it goes through uh, the way one way of solving that equation by hand and then you read out the solutions and you're done. So if you're doing it by hand this is one of the ways that you can do it. There are other ways and if you Google partial fraction expansion uh, you'll get more information really than you probably want. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to use MATLAB so we'll bring up MATLAB and we'll uh, do the partial fraction, fraction expansion in MATLAB as well. Okay, so to do the partial fraction expansion in MATLAB, I'm going to define two vectors. The first is b, and b is the numerator, or the vector of the coefficients in the numerator. And since in the case we're working on now, I have only a constant, which is 10, that's all that b ends up being. a is a vector of the constants in the denominator, and here the s squared term is 1, so I'll put that in. The s term is 2, and my constant term is 0, okay, because I don't actually have anything that doesn't have an s associated with it. Okay, so the next thing I can do then is use the residue function, which is a function built into MATLAB that allows us to compute partial fraction expansions. So I do square bracket r comma p comma k is equal to residue b comma a and I get all of this stuff that prints out. And this basically is uh, now the information I need in order to write down the partial fraction expansion. So we'll go back to the drawing and uh, actually then use this. So through the magic of technology, I've copied the results from uh, MATLAB into the drawing. And again, this partial fraction expansion is going to look something like this. R1 over S minus P1 plus R2 over S minus P2. Okay, so now let's see what these values are. R1 is this term here, this minus 5. P1 is this term here, which is the negative 2. Okay, 
So those are the terms that will be the, the first terms in the partial fraction expansion. R2 is this 5. And P2 is this 0. Okay. So to plug these values in, I have uh, this is going to be equal to R1, which is minus 5, over S minus a negative 2, plus R2, which is 5, over s minus 0. And so this can be simplified as minus 5 over s plus 2 plus 5 over s. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, again, I've computed my partial fraction expansion. And if I remember correctly, let's see if this is actually true, this is the this is a different result than what we got from Wolfram Alpha. So where did we screw up? Um, hmm, this is just not good. Ten, one, two, zero. Uh, maybe we have put different things. Yeah. We put different things in. Uh, in Wolfram Alpha, I had put 10 over s squared plus s. And in, uh, in MATLAB, I put 10 over s squared plus 2s. Uh, what was my original one? I had 10 over s squared plus 2s. So let's go fix the alpha one really quickly just to make sure that the universe is still consistent. If I put it s squared plus 2s, then I get 5 over s minus 5 over s plus 2, which is what I have here. 5 over s, this guy, minus 5 over s plus 2. Okay, so all is well with the world again. I was a little nervous there. Okay, so finally, to take the inverse Laplace transform of this, which I need to do quickly because I've been blathering on, uh, this is going to transform to 5u of t. This is going to transform to minus 5e to the minus 2t u of t. And I add those guys together. So basically we have that this expression has as its inverse Laplace transform this time expression, which if you can read, you're probably, your eyesight's better than mine. So that's your first partial fraction expansion. Uh, the next video will get a little more complicated.